Item number, SCP-6076, Level 3 Confidential, Containment Class, Euclid, Disruption Class, Kennick, Risk Class, Danger, Assigned Site, Site 202, Site Director, Joanne King, Research Head, Samuel Green, Assigned Task Force, Mobile Task Force Zeta-39, Kaladin Clan, Special Containment Procedures SCP-6076 is currently kept in a retrofitted chamber built around its original recovery site, bound with steel cable to a stone pillar. The interior of the cavern has also been lined with steel, and the original stone gates replaced with a reinforced vault door. Observation of SCP-6076 is to take place remotely, using installed security cameras. Personnel are only to enter the containment chamber for scheduled feedings. Two automated turrets are to remain locked onto SCP-6076 at all times and are to begin firing should it become active. Installation of additional turrets is currently underway, following the most recent active period. Feeding of SCP-6076 is to take place every three months. SCP-6076 is to be fed using only dog meat, and this feeding is to be performed only by female members of personnel. In order to limit potential casualties, only one member of personnel is to be present within the containment chamber during these feeding sessions. In the event that SCP-6076 becomes active, Mobile Task Force Zeta-39, Kaladin Clan, are to position themselves outside the containment chamber's entrance and fire upon SCP-6076 if a full breach takes place. As SCP-6076 is already dead, killing it is impossible. Instead, offensive efforts are to focus on disabling it via shots to the arms and legs. Once SCP-6076 returns to an inert state, it is to be taken back to the containment chamber and once again tied to the stone pillar. The last remaining member of SCP-6076's original wardens, Lucy L. Reynolds, has been designated as a consultant in the event that containment procedures must be amended. Description SCP-6076 is the corpse of a male human with severe biological abnormalities, capable of temporary and spontaneous reanimation, located in County Louth, Ireland. In terms of appearance, SCP-6076 is 2.7 meters and displays signs of having suffered severe injuries before expiring, including numerous lacerations across the chest. The most prominent injury, however, is a gaping hole present where the corpse's heart would presumably be located. Analysis of the wound suggests it was inflicted using some form of spearhead, which is corroborated by oral records preserved by SCP-6076's original wardens. Testing of genetic material recovered following SCP-6076's active periods has confirmed that, genetically, it does not differ from normal humans. Despite this, numerous biological anomalies are immediately obvious, namely, SCP-6076 possesses seven fingers on each hand and seven toes on each foot, with nails extended and hardened in a manner similar to claws. Both of SCP-6076's legs are twisted 180 degrees. The feet and shins face backwards while the heels and calves face forwards. Severe engorgement of the vascular system, resulting in veins being highly visible across SCP-6076's body, most prominently on the forehead and temples. Seven pupils, bright red in coloration, are present in each eye. One eye has recessed far back into the socket to such a degree that it is not observable without insertion of a dedicated camera. The other eye hangs freely against SCP-6076's cheek. SCP-6076's cheeks have peeled back along its face, directly exposing the muscle of the jaw, and SCP-6076's lungs have been forced so far up its throat that they are directly visible when its mouth is open. All remaining hair on SCP-6076's head stands violently on end, and possesses enough rigidity and tensile strength to pierce material it makes contact with. For the majority of the year, SCP-6076 is dead. However, at some point during the month of August, SCP-6076 will spontaneously reanimate and rampage for a variable length of time. During this active state, SCP-6076 is not believed to possess sapience. 
Evidence and oral records instead suggest that it acts solely on instinct and muscle memory to kill any organisms within the vicinity. Generally, it will do this using its hands to clod enemies, moving with strength and speed far exceeding ordinary human limits, but on occasion has been observed to reflexively use makeshift weaponry available to it instead. Once SCP-6076's active period ends, it will once again cease life function and drop to the ground where it stands. Although records indicate that SCP-6076 has been dead for 2,000 years at minimum, analysis has shown cellular degradation consistent with a period of approximately 50 years. This degradation appears to heal to some degree when SCP-6076 reanimates, allowing it to move and attack, but will revert to its prior state once SCP-6076 becomes inert. Footnote 1 Note that the hole through SCP-6076's heart remains present, regardless of if it is active or inert. This decomposition has been observed to actively progress at a greatly slowed rate while SCP-6076 is inert. All of SCP-6076's interactions with other humans consist of mindless killing, save for a unique form of behavior observed when a human female approaches it in its inert state. Immediately upon the individual entering within one meter of SCP-6076, the corpse will widely open its mouth and allow itself to be fed. Records provided by SCP-6076's previous warden recommends that dog meat be used for the purposes of feeding, although the origin of this practice is as of yet unclear. These records also suggest that feeding SCP-6076 in this way reduces the average length of its rampages. Footnote 2. It has not yet been confirmed whether this is actually the case or if it is merely a form of placebo. Until this can be confirmed either way, however, containment specialists recommend this practice be continued. It has been suggested in the past that SCP-6076 be preemptively disabled in its inert state to aid containment once it becomes active. All such attempts have been unsuccessful, however, due to the corpse's secondary anomalous property. When an individual attempts to damage SCP-6076 in its inert state, a bright orange light will begin shining from within its body. At the same time, the corpse will begin producing extreme amounts of heat, increasing in intensity and range until the threat is neutralized. History The precise origin of SCP-6076 is unknown, but it is believed to have been contained by a lineage of wardens, culminating in the local Reynolds family, for approximately 2,000 years. During this period, the wardens would traditionally spend the majority of the year bolstering the defenses imprisoning SCP-6076 in the cavern, before abandoning the site entirely during the month of August. Historical records suggest that this was generally sufficient to keep SCP-6076 imprisoned during its active state, although sporadic accounts of a monster slaughtering its way through the countryside suggest that this was not always the case. On August 3rd, 2014, prior to Foundation containment of the anomaly, SCP-6076 broke free of the cavern in this manner. It then proceeded to the nearby village of Kenny, killing 13 civilians before once again returning to an inert state. The last remaining warden of SCP-6076, Lucy L. Reynolds, attempted to return SCP-6076 to the cavern via lorry during the ensuing confusion, but was intercepted and detained by Foundation agents responding to reports of the anomaly. During negotiations shortly afterwards, Reynolds agreed to transfer containment of SCP-6076 to the Foundation. During the original retrofitting of SCP-6076's containment chamber, the following message was found painted onto a metal sheet on the far wall. This place is a place of honor. Highly esteemed dead are commemorated here. What is here was admirable and inspiring to us. This message is a warning about danger. As communication with Lucy L. Reynolds has confirmed this message was placed for humorous purposes and was not relevant to containment, it was removed by construction staff. Addendum 6076-1 Activity Log The following is a record of all active SCP-6076 periods since it came into Foundation containment in 2014. Full video logs and recorded witness testimony are available from the Site-202 archives upon request. Date: August 29th, 2015 Active period length, 30 minutes, 28 seconds Details 
SCP-6076 reanimates and is immediately fired upon by both automated turrets to such a degree that it is initially unable to free itself from the pillar. Once the turrets stop to reload, SCP-6076 bursts free of its bindings and tears one turret apart with its hands, but is disabled by the remaining one until it returns to an inert state. Date: August 8, 2016 Active period length 19 minutes, 9 seconds Details SCP-6076 reanimates, breaking free of its bindings, and disables one turret by repeatedly stomping on it, moving at extreme speeds to evade fire. Once this is done, it hurls the remains of the first turret at the second, rendering it inoperable. SCP-6076 then pounds at the vault door for the remainder of the active period, expiring shortly before breaking through. Date: August 1, 2017 Active period length, 11 seconds. Details. Tests performed to verify if SCP-6076 would accept feeding during the month of August. SCP-6076 consumed the dog meat provided by the female D-Class, then reanimated, leaned over, and bit out a significant chunk of their skull before once again expiring. Date. August 19th, 2018. Active period length. 14 minutes, 56 seconds. Details. SCP-6076 reanimates, breaks free of its bindings, and begins running clockwise around the containment chamber at extreme speeds to avoid turret fire. As it is doing this, it also tears free a steel panel from the wall, which it uses as a makeshift weapon to destroy both turrets. It then attempts to break through the vault door, but expires before much damage can be done. Date. August 7, 2019 Active period length 6 seconds Details SCP-6076 reanimates and breaks free of its bindings, but once again expires and drops to the ground before turrets can even begin firing. Date August 29, 2020 Active period length 1 hour, 11 minutes, 23 seconds Details SCP-6076 reanimates, breaks free of its bindings, then uses said bindings as a rudimentary flail to disable both turrets. It then, over the course of 50 minutes, breaks through the vault door and is engaged by Mobile Task Force Zeta-39, Kaladin Clan. Three members of the squad are killed during the ensuing conflict, but SCP-6076 is also damaged to such a degree that it cannot move. After an additional 10 minutes of SCP-6076 attempting to crawl towards survivors and tear them apart with its teeth, it once again expires. Interview 6076-1 Interview conducted between research head Dr. Samuel Green and Lucy L. Reynolds several months following SCP-6076's transfer to Foundation custody. Prior to interview, Reynolds had been given a brief tour of the retrofitted facilities and asked if, given her experience with the anomaly, she had any guidance for further improvement. Begin recording. So, any thoughts? <laughs> I think I'm out of my depth, if that helps any. Well, I can understand you there. It's a little bit of an upgrade from what you were working with before. <laughs> a little bit of an upgrade? I was stuffing the door with garbage and hoping it didn't break through. It's a miracle I didn't fuck it up sooner. You don't sound enthused about your work with the anomaly. Who would be? Dedicating your life to forcing dog meat down a dead guy's throat? It was my mom who did that before me, you know, the feeding. Bet she loved that honeymoon. Yes, I understand it was passed through the family. Thirteenth birthday, my dad wakes me up. Your mom's too sick, he says. Need you to do something for me. Takes me by the hand and leads me to that damn cavern. Gives me some dog meat and tells me that I need to do it for the rest of my life. What a present, right? The, uh, the dog meat, yes. Our containment specialists have been discussing whether that is necessary or not. Did your father ever go into that a bit more before he passed? The reasoning for it? Apparently the guy was under some kind of curse. If he ate dog meat, it fucked him up. Being frank, I think eating raw dog meat would fuck anyone up. But I'm not some kind of magic guy, so I don't know. I just did as he said. <sighs> wasn't... wasn't always easy getting a hold of that stuff. A curse. 
I'll report that back, see what the specialists think. Did he ever mention anything else? Anything that might be useful? Those turrets you got in there? Don't use them until he starts moving. Otherwise the hero light is going to fuck you up. <sighs> yes, we're, uh, we're aware of that at this point. Everything else he told me is basically just, um, just lore. And I really doubt much of it's actually true. He's half god, half human. Hence why he's all messed up, I guess. He killed a whole bunch of people, and then he died when he was ran through with a non-believer spear. Happy ending for everyone. You sound a little resentful. I don't really have any... resentment, I don't think. Not for the body. It's just a thing, you know. It doesn't care if I hate it or not. It's like... toxic waste. You just have to sit on it until it stops doing its thing. Heroism has a hell of a half-life. I don't think I'd call what SCP-6076 does um, heroic. Well, depends on your definition, I guess. What would you say a hero is? Well, I suppose someone who helps right wrongs, protects the innocent, that sort of thing. An ideal for others to strive towards, or something like that. Back in the day, being a hero meant you were good at killing the enemy, and that was pretty much it. And I'd bet our friend down there was really good at it. So good as Corpster remembers how to do it 2,000 years later. <laughs> no wonder someone put a spear in him. That's an interesting perspective. You watch the hero's grave your whole life. You start to notice the stink. <sighs> 2,000 years of keeping him buried, and I'm the one who fucks it up for good. Typical, right? You did the best you could, under the circumstances. <laughs> under the circumstances. Yeah, I guess so. Thirteen people. I knew some of them, you know. Kenny is the big place. There were funerals. I'm sorry. I've heard some of you guys talking about amnesiacs or amnestics or whatever. Don't know exactly what those are, but context telling me there's some kind of memory drug. They might be. Just asking, but if you stuck me one of those things, are they good enough to make me forget this whole thing? My dad waking me up that night, having to keep that thing locked up all these years, having to... having to stuff that dog meat down its throat. Could it make me think I had a normal life, at least? Could it? I'm afraid not. <laughs> Figures. Thank you guys so much for watching, and a huge thank you to all of my patrons on Patreon. Special shout out to level 4 patrons Lesby Friends, Alexis Zagrate, Everborn, and Joe Light. And a huge shout out to level 5 patron Doomsday LLC Prince and Design, and level 6 patron Totally Not a Femboy. If you would like to see your name at the end of my videos, see my videos early, and get some other cool perks, head on over to patreon.com slash drmaxwell, link in the description.